Hello, my name is John Turner, and I am the Manager of Community Development and Research at the Nebraska Investment Finance Authority, otherwise known as NIFA. The Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, also known as the CARES Act, is a $2.2 trillion economic stimulus bill passed by Congress and signed into law by President Trump on March 27, 2020, in response to the economic fallout of the COVID-19 pandemic. NIFA is conducting interviews with Nebraska agencies who are the recipients of this funding and providing housing resources. Some programs are required to allocate all funding by December 30th, 2020, while others have two years to allocate funds. Understanding the timing of this funding and the numerous people in Nebraska that need help, NIFA wants to share these valuable resources via our social media platforms. Today, we are joined by Tiffany Cook, the Community Response Coordinator, and Heather Tomzak, the Community Impact Director at United Way of the Midlands, to talk about a new program that provides rent, mortgage, and utility assistance across the state. So welcome, Tiffany and Heather. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. Um, yeah, we just want to get the word out uh, as to what you're doing. So maybe you could start by just talking a little bit about what United Way of the Midlands is about. Perfect. Um, I can jump in there and talk about more of the broad overall uh, United Way of the Midlands. We uh, run local campaigns. Um, mostly it's it's in roughly in the Douglas County, Sarpy County, um, and uh, southwest parts of southwest Iowa. Um, we run campaigns with local uh, corporate um, friends and we raise those funds and then we do, we utilize uh, those funds to distribute across the community for programs such as and anything working with um, basic needs, education or financial stability. That's primarily where we invest in those um, programs within the community to help the, uh, those at risk or in poverty. Um, okay. I don't know if you have anything else to add, Tiffany. Our primary role with the United Way is to disperse those funds. Um, so I oversee our basic needs uh, programming investments, and then I have another colleague that works with the financial stability and education programming. Um, so yeah. Okay. So, uh, I mean, the fact that you're providing some of those basic needs, I'm sure this CARES funding provided a great opportunity and it sounds like maybe you're well suited to to handle that can you talk about how this is expanding so yeah so um great great segue um we also operate the 211 um uh, call center uh throughout the state of nebraska and then we also um support iowa in some uh, in some capacity uh with their uh efforts in iowa um, but it just made really great sense because our team on the 211 was taking calls for rental utility assistance um, and connecting them to needed resources or referrals agencies that provided those services. Um, we did have a small subset of funds uh, run through Omaha World Herald called the Goodfellows Program that they were um, that the, that team would um, dispense. Um, so it just made great sense that we uh, accepted, um, a, we were awarded an investment from the state in order to sub, uh, for the rental and utility assistance, um, which uh, we also added the mortgage component because that is a huge um, need that we uh, were seeing uh, from one of our uh, partners that we currently invest in on homeownership and uh, foreclosure prevention was the need for um, more additional resources for mortgage assistance so we added that component within our program um, to support that uh, so now currently with that program we are offering rent utility and mortgage assistance for individuals that have been financially impacted by covid that's fantastic and uh the i've told people this on other interviews is that i was the manager of the um, homelessness prevention rapid rehousing program in lincoln from 2009 to 2012. And I remember people calling and saying, do you help with mortgage assistance? And we didn't. And now when I say we, I'm talking about where I used to work. Um, but I don't remember mortgage assistance really being uh, a resource that people had in the past. So this seems to be a new resource that, how are you finding that uh, different or from rental assistance to mortgage assistance? Was that a, 
a major shift for you to kind of switch to that hat, that hat on? So yes and no. Um, so we, uh, back in May, kind of when COVID, uh, or maybe it was April, um, we started having conversations with community partners that were seeing a need for, an, uh, for COVID specific funding uh, for mortgage. And we, we work with Family Housing Advisory Services very closely for some other um, programs that they do, fair housing um, and then the foreclosure. And they were expressing kind of a like a, an outcry, not more um, an outcry of like seeing more folks um, probably potentially going to be needing needing that support. So they primarily insti like instigated the conversation, and we felt it was really important to support that because um, I we felt that the rent uh, was supported. Um, against like some of the rapid rehousing programming, the homeless prevention, um, where mortgage wasn't really supported. So we put that together probably in the very beginning. Um, and then we wanted to make sure that that was included the second time um, with the CARES specific funding. Um, yeah. And then I don't, uh, and I don't want to leave Tiffany out because she's um, she's supporting this as well. So I didn't, if, did I leave anything out from the last two questions that you wanted to add to or um, uh, compliment. <laughs> I want to make sure you're, you're speaking as well. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Any input you have or experience you have. And, and I did hear about your uh, program through Tiffany on a uh, um, local impact group. So um, appreciate that connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't have... Um... I, I feel like Heather's maybe a little bit more involved with the mortgage side of things, and and I have really put my focus on rent and utilities. Um, mm -hmm. They're both a great need, but I the sure. the back end process of how that goes is very different. I feel between those two, um, so that's kind of where I know more of is on that side. Yeah, well, things. we'd love to hear about that too. So. I have actually, you know, I'm hearing so much about the eviction moratorium and, uh, you know, I'm hearing more that landlords are like, you know, but we need to get our rent paid. And in my head, I think, well, they should be right. Cause there's all this resource out there. So are you, are you getting this, are you seeing these dollars, you know, being accessed by people or are you constantly getting flooded with requests for rental assistance? I, <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that's the short answer is yes. There, yeah. there has been um, quite a a recent influx in particular. I feel like the last few days, um, we've seen it increase significantly, the amount of applications that we're receiving. Um, as far as like communications with landlords go, I have not had any negative experiences. Um, but you certainly see patterns. I mean, I'm not going to put anyone on blast, but you know, yeah. there are certain people that you see come up repeatedly. Like, mm -hmm. you know, the, there are some people that have eviction notices, even though there is a moratorium going on. And I can, you know, I, I would bet it's probably like one of three people that I see consistently over and over and over again. And surprisingly, I'm, I, at least to my surprise, I'm finding that it's like this, you know, the the more like mom and pop who own a couple of properties that are much more flexible and giving of grace to their tenants, not charging late fees, um, letting, you know, just being very generous and kind and cooperative, um, more so than like larger companies, which, um, you know, is kind of kind of surprising to me, but it's yeah. very enlightening experience. I'm sure. And uh, the thing I'm, as we're talking, you guys are covering the state of Nebraska. So are you seeing, um, have you gotten requests from way out west or are, is it mostly urban areas or? So, yeah, um, it's not, I, I would say that's a little bit slower to start out with. Um, we do, again, going back to the 211 call department, that is the initial um, uh, queue for when they offer that program to them, um, if they're calling from a, a certain community. Um, I would say 
it's been slower uh, on kind of seeing that out of outskirts uh, counties versus the Douglas, Serpy, and Cass um, specifically. I'm seeing a little bit more within the Lancaster County area is starting to come through. And then um, Buffalo County is one that uh, it brings to, like we've had a few phone calls from them as well. Um, so we've been working with some of those folks that are in that uh, specific county. Um, we are in conversations with the governor to kind of see how we can support those smaller communities that potentially um, did get CARES um, so we can get the word out for them and then complement them with our funds if they run out. Um, so we are kind of in the initial stages of that. Um, and then our other partners that are providing the CARES within kind of this, uh, the, the local community are working on giving us as a referral for those uh, counties that are out, that are kind of on the outskirts of Nebraska to support them. Yeah, well, we definitely can help get the word out. Um, I forgot to ask, is this response recovery money that has to be spent by the end of December or did you get some, do you have more leeway? Yeah, I would love to enter. I would love to hear more about the ones that are able to disperse it through the two years. No, we are yeah. um, our our funds have to be spent by December thirtieth, okay. um, and then we uh, potentially might have an opportunity for an additional pot of money that would be December thirtieth, the deadline as well, um, kind of at a, from the state request. Okay, and those uh, and I, you know, maybe I should add this to the script, but the. The two years, I guess I'm referring to the um, HUD Emergency Solutions grant money. Uh, and okay. That that funding, I think, uh, is what lasts a little bit longer. Um, gotcha. So that really, that really, we do need to get the word out to help mm -hmm. uh, that money down. And um, and it, you know, it's obviously we want to get the money to the people, but being able to allocate that money shows the great need. And maybe it does show that the need for more because none of us know what's going to happen in January. Um, right, right. You know, I hope that eviction is being prevented, you know, like the work that you're doing. Like, I mean, it's being prevented by the moratorium if people know their rights, right? But yeah. that, um, you know, that money is being spent so they don't end up owing so much. I was glad to hear you say that, you know, you've got some landlords that are saying, we're not going to charge a late fee, yeah. which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, you know, to do that, but, um, you know, I guess people are trying well, to- Well, interesting, yeah, sorry, it's, I was gonna say, it's interesting that you bring that up because with, you know, on the other side, on the mortgage side, you know, what we were hearing from family housing and some of the mortgage individuals is that they're really trying to educate homeowners because many, many companies were offering, um, you know, deferments, which, I don't think all of the individual like homeowners really understood that that's not a like a, a forgiveness it's a it's going to defer um and what we're hearing is that those deferments are going to um be kind of like some of them did like a year to where at the end of that year deferment it's going to be a balloon payment which could really put individuals in a um, a crisis situation that we don't want to have happen um so it's it, you know it's both education uh, as in like this is what a deferment means this is what you know your your rights are this is what you're liable for and then here is a great segue to a program that can help you know offset some of those that that funding um, you know once you know your deferment's over um, so that's what we were seeing more of um, is trying of an education and then a support factor yeah. Very important. I'm, I'm glad to hear you talking about 211 just because I've always felt like I need to know more about it. I mean, I just kind of know of it. I remember, like I said, when I was doing HPRP, that that was a big piece. I've heard it's very, uh, you know, very impactful in Omaha. And I'm wondering how we could also help support that statewide, you know, resource because I we're doing so many webinars to get the word out. But I'm like that you pick up the phone 211 housing, food, basic needs. I mean, it's right there. Well, John, maybe that's a perfect segue for us to introduce you to Josh Quinn and his team, and he can set up some time to kind of go over what that looks like. Cause I mean, I know enough to probably be dangerous on two-on-one. Um, and, and I would 
connect you to the best person available to provide that introduction and give you the whole spiel. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, so much, you know, we talk a lot about uh, landlords. Um, one thing that they can do to help their tenants is to know what resources are in their communities, uh, you know, and, and if a tenant's behind on rent, maybe, you know, suggesting to reach out to one of these agencies. Or if you find out a tenant doesn't have any food or, you know, some some property managers in rural communities, they wear hat, many hats, more than just a property manager. But so how do we let them know what's out there? And that's kind of what these webinars and our other webinars are supposed to be doing. Uh, this is great info. I'm trying to think of any other things that people might. Uh, oh, I guess so the best way to reach out to you um, for help uh, or is is really 211. Is that kind of the main referral source? Um, do you have a, a website you'd like to promote or? So two on one, um, but then also uh, for those folks that just want to apply and can um, and have all of the documentation, uh, we can, Tiffany and I can forward you the, um, the link to the application so that individuals don't have to um, wait on a phone call. Because uh, essentially that's what the two on one currently is going to be offering, but, it, but the two on one would would complement the fact that if I'm struggling with my rent and my utilities, I might need a pantry or other resources um, that the two-on-one specialist could connect them to. So, I mean, it's it's a an and and or, I guess, uh, um, so that we can follow up with that link so that you have that um, and then two-on-one. Yeah, very good. So, I'm in Gary, Nebraska. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to pay my rent. I call two on one. At least, hopefully, that's going to get me in the right direction. Or uh, Google two one one, right? Or you can there's a website. Or I would imagine. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, two one one actually has a um, texting capability, which is super uh, neat. There we we don't I don't think it's live yet, but they're uh, um, uh, an app that they're creating. Um, so they're they're you know, moving along in the right direction, um, but we can forward that. I don't know if you need it like right now at the second, um, but we can forward the link to that and then um, how to access it online. Awesome. Uh, I do see that Tiffany uh, put in the chat. Um, oh. www.unitedwaymidlands.org slash NE cares. Yes, very good. And I'm not for sure. That's I don't know when we do recordings if that shows up. So that's why I wanted to read it. Oh, um, perfect. Yeah. The okay. application is also available in Spanish, and there are multiple areas where you can upload documents. So if there are things that you're not sure about, like where does this go, there's a mm -hmm. spot where you can just upload a miscellaneous document. And something that I really appreciate about this application that um, is not necessarily on all applications is that there is a um, a part where you can write a statement from a, where you can write your own statement regarding your situation. So everyone has a story and I know when you're being asked to, you know, put your your trauma and your tough experience down into a couple documents and a couple check boxes on a paper or on a website, that's really tough. So um, we, we do give the opportunity for people to um, explain where they're at and, and how we can best help them, which I feel is, is really beneficial. Yeah, very good. Well, I think, uh, it's like I said, it's a great resource. I'm glad you guys had time today to help get the word out and we'll try to do the same and definitely keep in touch. And yeah, I look forward to learning more about 211. Cool. So yeah, so thank you, Heather and Tiffany for your Thanks, time. Uh, any last thoughts? I don't think so. All right. I, I just wanna say thanks for the opportunity. I We can't thank you enough to get the word out. Um, like, it, yeah, there, there's a lot of need out there. And I think people are sometimes uh, fearful of applying, um, you know, just because of all the paperwork and whatnot, but we're trying to, like Tiffany said, make it um, more accessible 
Um, and so we're like many of the partners along with us are trying to have conversations to help them see that, you know, their situation does meet the, the criteria and we can help them fill things out. So if they need that additional support, um, we're here to help them, um, you know, just to, to help support the need. So. Okay. Very good. Thank you.